And these are not super fragile seedlings. Mm -hmm. These are pretty Obviously. tough little yeah. buggers. So um, uh, the, the main thing is just we're getting them in there. And I'm not sure how successful this is going to be. Um, I, I think these plants will be fine, but you know. I believe in them. Hi, I'm Jeff Jensen, Director of Community Programs with Trees Forever. And this is one of the most beautiful times to take a drive on our county roads and see all the beautiful forbs that are blooming, the wonderful color, and chances are this was made possible by your county roadside program. Every year, county conservation boards and roadside managers from all over the state convene at the Tallgrass Prairie Center on the campus of you and I to get their yearly seed allowance. And that's what makes these beautiful roadsides possible. Let's learn more. Hi, I'm Christine Nemec. I'm the roadside program manager here at the University of Northern Iowa Tallgrass Prairie Center. All right, today we're at the shed south of the Tallgrass Prairie Center. The Tallgrass Prairie Center is part of the University of Northern Iowa. Once a year, I host an annual seed pickup where roadside managers around the state come and pick up seed that they're going to plant in their county rights of way. Native seed is great because native plants have really deep fibrous roots that help reduce erosion. So that's a big selling point for counties. They really like to reduce erosion on those steep roadside slopes. Once established, the native plants need less mowing. That means less fuel costs, less of a safety risk for the people who have to go out and mow the steep slopes. That's a big benefit. And drivers really like pretty wildflowers. They like the grasses in the fall when they turn those nice golden colors. So it adds visual interest to the roadsides. Keeps drivers more alert, maybe less sleepy if they're looking at nice diverse plantings. And another big benefit of roadside plantings is the pollinator habitat. Bees and butterflies are adapted to native prairie plants. So for all those reasons, that's why there's roadside managers from around the state coming in to get seed. They'll be planting it in the roadsides over the next year and a half. It's one of the most exciting events at the center, getting to see our friends from around the state who also like to use native plants. The first day of the entire seed pickup is when we have three vendors from around the state come and drop off all their seed. This year we purchased over 13,000 pounds worth of seed. We put the seed out for bids and we had three vendors who got the bid. So Friday they came with anywhere from pickup trucks to a little semi and dropped off all their seed into the shed. That was day one. Let's take a few minutes to see what it takes to unload over 13,000 pounds of grass and forb seed from our vendors. Okay, here is after our first delivery from Allen Dan Seed Company. Two pallets of Forbes in boxes in small bags all ready to go. Things are just getting started here. Next up to deliver was Shooting Star Native Seeds from Spring Grove, Minnesota, and they've brought nine pallets of native grasses for the distribution.
all the seed is delivered, the warehouse is almost filled up with pallets of seed. Monday, the volunteers will arrive and help us prepare orders for the counties and cities that have roadside programs. Looks like Christine has a little work left to do, labeling all the different seed species for the volunteers to do their thing. But I think that's going to wrap up day one of the annual County Roadside Seed Pickup. We'll see you Monday. Let's check back in with Christine Nemec to learn more about what happens on day two of the annual County Roadside Seed Pickup. On day two of the seed pickup, we have an assembly line of all these folding tables, and each table has boxes full of the bags of wildflower and sedge seed. Sedge is kind of a grass-like plant that also establishes well in roadsides. And we have volunteers go around and pick one bag of every wildflower and sedge seed and put it in a big garbage bag. And that helps get ready for the seed pickup. Basically, they're creating one kind of seed mix called the diversity mix that has about 40 wildflower and sedge species in it. That's what happens on day two of the seed pickup. The task for our volunteers today is preparing seed orders for the counties. All the boxes of seed are neatly laid out on the long tables so that teams can move around the outside placing individual packets of seed into the garbage bag so that the combined order contains more than 40 different native species. This is called the diversity seed mix. Many hands certainly do make for light work. We finished a little early, so I grabbed Bree Hull, field coordinator with Trees Forever, and we visited the greenhouse to see what was going on up there. So what they yes. do is they seed them in the flats, and once they get a little bigger, they separate the individual, individual plant into the Oh, flats. snap, okay, so those are all, that are, they're all out there. Yeah. Now I'm pulling in individual plants to put in little plugs here that will eventually then go out into a... Into a plug. And so I'll show you what. The um, uh, plant that's ready to go in the field is gonna have um, roots like that. Oh, wow. So these plugs are kind of an interesting shape. They have a big hole at the bottom um, and they have grooves on the sides. So the grooves help direct the growth of the roots down to the bottom. You can see how they're you know, you know, kind of heading straight down. And then when they hit that big hole, the air causes the death of the root tip. And that also forces the roots in there to, um, to branch. So you end up with a very well-branched kind of solid plug that's easy to transplant. You can see how I can easily pop that out of there and you can pop it right in the hole. Do they call that air pruning, where the, the roots yeah. hit the air and then yeah. that's next? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it's called. You learn yeah. something new every day. Huh? All the orders are prepared and ready to go for the counties. Tomorrow, they're going to start arriving by appointment to get loaded up and on their way with high quality native seed ready to plant back home. Today and tomorrow we're going to have 44 counties from around the state come and get seed. Cities are also eligible to get seed. We just didn't happen to have any cities request seed this year, but some years we do have cities request seed. So these 44 counties will come and they'll pick up enough seed to plant 1,250 acres of right-of-way around the state. This is county right-of-way. So this is one of the larger seed distributions or restoration efforts in the state. It's not the largest, but it's one of the largest. But most of the seed packets that we get, the little packets of wildflower or sedge seed, each packet is enough to seed 10 acres. We leave it in its packet when the roadside managers are ready 
to plant, they'll open up all these little packets of wildflower and sedge seed, mix it together, and plant it on their roadsides, along with the large bags of grass seed. Today is the day of days. It's seed pickup day. The county conservation boards from all over the state of Iowa are gonna show up to get their seed orders. The garbage bags here have been filled with individual seed packets. Got some yellow, set, uh, yellow tag seed here. This is some gray-headed coneflower. But all sorts of different things. Some black-eyed Susans. And that all gets put into one of these bags. To be planted across the state of Iowa in roadsides north and south. Most of the seed we purchase is yellow tag seed. We have a preference for getting yellow tag seed. So what does yellow tag seed mean? That indicates the seed originated from native prey remnants, remnants that have never been plowed in the state. We have a position here at the Tallgrass Prairie Center, the program, the plant materials program manager, Laura Walter. She goes out and collects native seed from remnants. She grows it here at our seed production plots, provides it to seed producers, and then they grow it. And those seed producers are the people I buy the seed from. So why do we get seed that comes from remnants? Well, it maintains the genetic heritage of the plants we get. The seed that grows, that originates somehow from those native prairie remnants has been adapted to Iowa climate conditions. These are the plants that our Iowa wildlife have adapted to. That's why we have a preference for yellow tag seed because it originates from Iowa prairies. Hi, my name is Bree Hull. I am the Northeast Iowa Field Coordinator with Trees Forever. I'm here at the annual seed day, seed pickup day with Christine at the Tallgrass Prairie Center. All of the counties are going to be coming to get their roadside seed and it's like being a kid in a candy store. Let's see what we got here. This is the diversity mix. Oh my gosh, Fox Edge is absolutely gorgeous. And then, oh, Golden Alexander, they fill a whole field. It'll look bright yellow for so long. Want milkweed? You won't believe the butterflies you'll get. Butterfly milkweed? Oh my gosh. Can of milk fetch? Look how cute the seeds are. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. This one's a big one. Sneeze weed. I promise it doesn't make you actually sneeze. Um, oxeye sunflower? Oh my god. They grow so tall. I'm rolling in seed now, but in a few months our roadsides will be rolling in flowers. The action has been brisk. But with the help of all the great volunteers, loading up each county takes no time at all. At the end of the day, more than 13,000 pounds of native seed for Iowa roadsides were divvied up and distributed to counties all across the state. This has been an unbelievable experience, and I want to thank Christine Nemec, the Tall Grass Prairie Center, and the Living Roadway Trust Fund for making all this possible. I hope to see you next year at the annual County Roadside Seed Pickup. To volunteer, contact Christine Nemec at the Tallgrass Prairie Center today.